Some projects are perfect for craft parties. Others, not so much. Today I'm going to show you how to do a just for fun craft because not all projects make great craft parties. I'm going to show you step by step how to make the hottest craft for the season. And in the end I'm going to show you why I probably wouldn't do this for a craft class. But I will give you ideas for craft projects that do work really well for craft parties. The first thing we're going to need to make our ghosts is about two feet of aluminum foil. You're going to squeeze this together and turn it into the shape of an egg with a flat bottom. I personally made eight of these, and they do not have to be perfect by any means, but I tried to make them each about two inches tall. I wanted my ghosts to be fairly uniform. When working with your foil, try to get any weird bumps or ridges out so that it doesn't affect your final ghosts. These forms can be reused as many times as you like, so save them for the next round. The next thing you're gonna need is some air dry clay. I bought this container of it for $6 and it is linked in the show notes. I'm gonna pull off a piece that's roughly the size of a racket ball. While you may wanna use an oven baked clay like Sculpty or Fimo, I find that air dry clay is a great choice because it's super malleable and it's just easy to work with. Once you have the right amount of clay, you're gonna work with it until it creates a ball. Don't worry about perfection in this step, just enjoy the feeling of the clay. If you are finding that the clay is too hard to work with, you can add just a little bit of water to soften it up. But be careful because we don't want the clay to actually be sticky. When you have your ball, you're gonna flatten it into a pancake. You're not looking for perfection, but you're going for as round as you can. Then you're gonna take a rolling pin to make it nice and flat. I'm using a French baking pin, and I find that it makes it a lot easier for me to get my clay to be flat and nice and even. You're gonna roll it out until it's about an eighth of an inch thick. As you're doing this process, make sure you pick it up off of your tabletop often, otherwise it's gonna stick to the table and it won't work. If you were very brave, you could skip the next step that I'm gonna show you, but I wanted all of my ghosts to be fairly uniform. So to achieve that effect, all I did was grab an old takeout container. Then I cut out the outside with a palette knife, but you can also use a butter knife or anything with a sharp edge, really. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect because A, ghosts aren't perfect, and B, you're gonna smooth out the edges in the end anyway. This part of the project for me was very meditative and I really enjoyed taking the time to get this as smooth and beautiful as possible. Once you have a nice circle, you can run your fingers around the edge and just kind of smooth it out. And you're gonna take your aluminum sculpture and drape your clay over it. In this step, you wanna be extra careful. If you move too quickly, cracks will form in the clay that will be hard to get out. You're gonna to wanna to aim to get about five folds in your clay. Gently shape your ghosts and take plenty of time with this step. Once you have your ghost, you'll notice that there are some imperfections in him or her. Now nothing is ever going to be perfect if it's homemade, but what you can do is make your ghost a little bit more smooth by adding water and running your fingers up and down the folds. You can also use a sponge if you're feeling extra brave. Using a slightly damp sponge will make it easier to get a smooth surface. Once you have the shape of your ghost, you're going to poke eye holes. I'm using the back of a paintbrush this time, but there were lots of different pokey tools that I tried and they all work really well. Don't worry about perfection or even whether or not the holes go all the way through. We're gonna fix that at the end when the clay is more dry anyway. Your next step is to choose a napkin that brings you the most amount of joy possible. Again, I've linked this one in the notes and I thought it was absolutely perfect because of all the different types of flowers that were present in it. You're definitely gonna need to remove the top part of the napkin from the rest of the napkin so that you only have one layer. As you're cutting out your flowers or shapes, don't worry about perfection. The next thing I grabbed was Maker's Magic. I love this product. It works a lot like Mod Podge, but it's better in my opinion. Maker's Magic is gonna do two things for this project. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our flowers onto our ghosts and just kind of press them down. Then we're gonna grab a Q-tip 
and we're gonna dip it in the Maker's Magic, and we're just gonna go over the flower gently, kind of push, or pushing down lightly so that it doesn't affect the clay. You could wait until these ghosts are entirely dry to do this part, but I absolutely didn't. I was able to add the decoupage fairly easily after about 30 minutes of dry time for these. If I were a ceramics teacher, I would say that these pieces currently are leather hard. You can still feel the moisture in the clay, but they aren't moving around. I really had a great time separating the flowers on the napkins and making the ghosts look all different. I also added pumpkins to a few of them, and it is so much fun to watch each individual personality come out of the clay ghosts. I think working with clay is so good for my mental health because it really forces me to slow down. Once all of the ghosts were done, I took my Maker's Magic and I actually took a fan brush. Fan brushes are great because they are really soft, but they cover a fairly large surface area. The only thing that I find them really good for is decoupage and painting happy trees. But if you've got other uses for them, please let me know in the comments. When you're doing this, try to get a really nice even coat on all of the pieces, but don't use too much, otherwise it will drip. And by the way, if you'd like me to do more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. This project gave me so much joy to do, and I think it could be done in so many cute ways. Before I finish, I'd like to know whether you would teach this as a craft party, whether you think it's appropriate for a craft party, and if you used it as a craft party project, how would you modify it to make it yours or to make things go more smoothly? Every time I look at my comment section, I feel like I become a better craft party teacher because I get so many great tips and tricks from you. Also, before I break down whether this would make a great craft party or not, I would love it if you would like and subscribe to this video. It helps me and all of our people out a lot. Your final step in this project is to carefully remove the aluminum foil. There are a couple of tricks to this so that your ghost turns out just fine. The first is to just pull the folds away from the aluminum foil before you pull the rest of it out. And the second is just to take your time. You don't need to wait until they're entirely dry to pull them out of their mold. Making these ghosts made my whole heart happy, but I probably wouldn't teach them at a craft party, and there are a number of reasons why. The first thing we care about is time. How long does it make? Can I get a group of 30 people to do something like this in 90 minutes or under? While technically I might be able to, I think it would be a stretch. The second thing I worry about is mess. Now, I can absolutely cover tables and I can make this work for us, but it is a factor that kind of is going to be in the back of my mind. The next thing that I look for is feasibility. And the question that I have there is, can I easily take these little guys home? And the answer would be probably not. They're going to be really hard to get into cars because they're going to be wet. It's going to be sticky. It's going to be a problem. The final reason that I wouldn't teach this as a class is because it looks like it's super easy to do, but it's actually quite difficult. We are looking for projects that are generally beautiful, but an average 13 year old would have no problem doing. It really took some skill and some practice to smooth out all of the cracks and make this clay really work for me. And I'm not sure it would be an ideal situation for a group of people who might be in a brewery. If you'd like to learn more about teaching craft classes and craft parties, check out the Craft Teachers Club. There's an entire library of crafts that are perfect for groups of people. Happy crafting and good luck!